Amen, amen. Praise the Lord, young people. Uh, it's such a pleasure. It's an honor. I'm, I'm overjoyed that, you know, we're uh, getting over this coronavirus. I'm, I'm ready to go normal, you know. I want to take Sister Angie to a restaurant. I haven't done it for a whole year. <laughs> I'm looking forward that, uh, you know, that we could, uh, you know, get over this coronavirus and, and get on with our life. You know, it's uh, quite an experience that we've gone. But I thank God for uh, young people that you're still here today. You know, there's a lot of people who said that, you know, coronavirus has uh, caused a lot of uh, Christians to uh, backslide. That's the word they use, you know. But I thank God that you're here today, and I definitely want to make sure that, you know, we start teaching at your level. You know, Pastor Ruben's a great preacher, great teacher, but sometimes he's uh, he, he preaches over our head, huh? We gotta we gotta come down to, you know, where the rubber meets the road as far as uh, young people and uh, uh, the the ability for us to you know to understand the Word of God. And uh, uh, I don't know what happened. I woke up this morning. And I said, I'm gonna give a class today. You know, and I think it's God spoken uh, speaking to us because. I think you guys were kind of, I think, hoping that, you know, we get, right, some kind of a Sunday school going that we can teach to your levels, you know. A lot of you had, you know, uh, studying from home. A lot of you have been uh, doing the home uh, study, you know, and, uh, you know, now that they're going to open the class, I know my, my couple of my grandkids go, you know, I don't, I don't want to go back to school. I want to stay here. Well, you know, soon they're going to open the doors and we all have to go back to, uh, to school. Uh, and the same here, you know, uh, come back and give some some Bible studies, and that way we can all learn at all different levels, you know. Uh, later on, hopefully open up and, uh, you know, we have more for the, the smaller kids as well, that they can learn at their levels as well. Because we don't want to uh, not consider them, you know, our little, our little ones are growing up. I grew up in church, and I remember David and Goliath, Samson and Delilah, you know. And uh, if they're not getting that, you know, it's going to be difficult for them to grow up and then make sense of the Word of God because you need the basics of the Bible so you can understand the mysteries of the Bible, for, you know, if I may say it that way, you know. Um, so it's, a, it's a, a most important that uh, we, we study the Scriptures, and I thank God for that. Let us start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence, Lord, this wonderful, beautiful day that you've given us, this wonderful Son, Lord, that shines upon our faces, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we magnify your name because we understand, Lord, as well, that there are many people who didn't wake up this morning and they will never wake up because uh, their end of uh, life in this planet has expired, Lord. But I am here today, Lord, and I worship you. I glorify you. I exalt you. I lift up your name that is above name, Lord, and, and we bless you. We glorify you. We love you and we we want to do your will, Father. Bless the young people here today, Lord, that you might speak to their hearts as you have spoken to mine. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, in your wonderful and glorious name. Amen. Amen. I know our Sunday schools are a little shorter, so uh, hopefully we can learn something today. And uh, Here's a question that was asked of me, and I, and I put this into a study because, you know, the, the world knows that, that we are different people, you know. You go to school and you've got to portray that, that you're different than the world, right? And, and they'll notice that. I know at my workplace, they notice that, you know, and uh, uh, one of the persons came and out of the blue, you know, why did Jesus come into the world? You know, and I was kind of surprised and shocked that, you know, God has actually given me the opportunity for somebody to ask that question of me. Uh, uh, and for me to have the opportunity to speak to them of why did Jesus come into this world? And that's a great question, right? That is, that is an awesome question. And I want us to, young people, to uh, look at 1 Timothy uh, chapter, four, uh, the first uh, chapter of uh, this book, verse 15. And uh, we're going to let the Lord speak to us uh, of why did Jesus come into this world? And it says, here is a trustworthy saying. Another version says, here is a trustworthy statement that deserves full acceptance or, or, or special attention. 
What is that saying? What is that statement? Jesus, uh, Christ, Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Nine words that Paul is saying, listen, it's a trustworthy statement. It's a very important statement that I am about to give to you. Jesus, or Christ Jesus, came into this world to save sinners, and Paul says, of whom I am the worst. Now, this is very alarming for Paul to say this because I know of Paul and what the Bible tells me of Paul, that he possibly or uh, is the greatest Christian that ever lived. Paul is the greatest Christian. You look at the Bible and he, he wrote, you know, uh, many books, you know, uh, of, of who God is and what does God do and what has God come to do and his sacrifice and his, his death upon the cross. You know, it's Paul who, who, who uh, describes the mercies of God, the, the glories of God. But here he says, Jesus came to the world to save sinners and I am the baddest of them all. I am the worst. So what is, what is Paul trying to tell us? You know, what is that statement? And, you know, as, as I was thinking, the, the, the reason why did Jesus come? And, and we know who came, right? We know who came. Who came? Jesus Christ. Come December, everybody puts their mangers and, and, and Jesus and, and the baby Jesus and Mary and, and, and Joseph and animals all around. The whole world does that. Everybody knows who came. Everybody knows that Jesus Christ came. We know when he came, 2,000 years ago, Jesus came. So we know who, we know when, we know where, where did he come? Bethlehem, right? Everybody knows that. And then they also know how he came. He was born of a virgin. He was born uh, miraculously and the virgin's name was Mary. So we know who came. We know when he came. We know where he came. We know how he came, but here is the million dollar question. The question of all question, why did Jesus come into this world? Why did he leave heaven? Why did he leave uh, uh, the, the protection, the awesomeness that I can imagine heaven is? Why did he leave heaven? Why did he come to this earth? Right? What was the purpose of his questions? And let me tell you, young people, these are awesome. These are great questions. But there is one, one question that is above of all questions, and it relates to the why. How does his coming relate to my life? How did his coming relate to your life? And this is what I want us to consider today, right? Uh, uh, today, we, we want... Uh, Jesus, we want the Lord to speak to us in this scripture, 1 Timothy 1.15, and it addresses, it goes right to the point. It doesn't skirt around the question. It doesn't take the long road to get to the why. It goes straight to the reason, crystal clear why of his coming. And let, and let us look at the verse. First of all, let us consider how the verse starts. What Paul is saying is it's a worthy statement. This is how the verse starts. Here is a trustworthy statement that deserves full attention. And, and, and as I meditate in that, young people, I'm thinking, you know, why does he start it this way? It's a very interesting way for Paul to start. This is a, <coughs> excuse me, this is a trustworthy statement. Why did he say that? Isn't everything else that he wrote in the Bible, in his epistles, isn't them true statements? Aren't they trustworthy statements? Why is it this one here? Why does he want to put so much emphasis on it? Why does he want to put so much 
importance, why does Paul want to underscore the statement that he is saying? And the reason why, young people, is that he wants us to know that is a very, very important statement. It's a statement that rises to the highest level of importance of the reason why he came. You know, if, if, if you don't know why he came, you, 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 you've lost it all. Like I said, the whole world knows when he came, where he came, how he came. If you only know that, you're only a religious person. There's a lot of religious people. They know all of that. But when it comes to the why, they miss the boat. They miss the understanding. And, and, and they miss the reason of his level. So this statement, Paul is trying to say, rises to the highest level of importance of what he is about to say. It needs to capture our attention. We need to draw close to that statement. We should be able to see the importance of that statement. What is Paul trying to say? Right? Because everything that Paul says, it's inspired by God. That's okay. It's just, oh, okay. Because what it, Paul says, it's, it's, it's always a very inspirational. All his words, all his books are, are inspirational. But this one, this one is at the most highest level. Hallelujah. This is something that we deserve to pay attention. Amen. What he is saying, that he, what he is about to say is reliable. It's a true statement. And it's a statement worthy of our attention. So here's the question. What is that statement? What is, what is, it, what is it that's faithful? And what is it that's reliable about that taste uh, 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 statement? And here it is. Here is the, what's trustworthy. And I highlighted it in red. Jesus, or Christ Jesus, came into the world to save sinners. Uh, from the very, very beginning, we know the story, Adam and Eve, right? Uh, they sinned. They sinned against God. They disobeyed God. God, God since the beginning, proposed that he would come into the world. He proposed to come to where we were into this world. His goal was to come into the world to save sinners, bad people, disobedient people, right? Jesus did not come to introduce a new religion. He didn't come to introduce a new way of living only amongst men, how we should behave, how we should obey our parents. We should clean our room. We should help with the yard and those are all good things, and, that, and I think that God honors that, right? But he didn't just come to introduce a new religion, right? He did not just come to show us how to live and how to get along with people, morals. All of those are, are good things. Uh, religion is a good thing, but when it, you take out the why of his coming, we miss, we miss the boat. We miss what, what he came to do, Right? He came to liberate us, and, and, and we're going deeper now. He came to liberate and rescue us that were infected with a virus called sin. That word came to me because it's a big word right nowadays, right? Virus is a big, a big word. It's a virus called sin. Sin is a mortal plague that has infected all humankind. You know, thank God that I had missed that coronavirus, and my household has not been infected, and I thank God for that, right? People can survive coronavirus, but people cannot survive sin if they don't repent, if they don't come to Jesus, amen? That's the reason why he came, Matthew 121, for he shall be named Jesus because he will save, there's the word again, save his people from their sins. That's, there, there's the why right there. There's the reason why. To save his people from, from uh, uh, the virus called sin, deadly sin, 
mortal sin. And it's very interesting how he states the verse that Jesus came. That, that, that infers to that he came from somewhere, right? I came to church today. How did I come to church? Because I was at home this morning and I'm here today, so I came from church. Here it says, Jesus came to earth. Jesus came into the world. <clears throat> what this is uh, indicative of is that he came down from heaven. He came from above. He came from heaven into this world. And you might ask, why did he come from heaven? And the answer is that he came down because we couldn't go up. Does it make sense? He came down because us in transgressions and sins couldn't go up. He came down because you and I couldn't go up. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So God himself had to come down to us. And I thank God for that. That he came. He came down to us. Can you imagine God in, in human form not coming down to us? Where, where would I be? Where would Brother James be? Where would you be? Where would your parents be? Of course, they will be giving you an, a Christian education because what? Because there would be no gospel. If God had come, there would be no way of salvation. There would be no way to be saved, amen? We could not go to heaven with our good deeds, with our good morality, with, with being a good person, cleaning my room and obeying my parents. Uh, that's not good enough. There had to be a, 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 a different way, a different mode of salvation. He came into this world to save sinners. And the word here refers to a place of sin, misery, and death. That's what the, the word world means. What is, when you say, what is that? He came to, the, to this world. He came to a place of sin. He came to a place of misery. He came to a place of death. This is the place where all humanity was. This is the place where you and I are. This world is wicked. This world is, is, is immoral. <clears throat> this world is lost. A place where man is enemy of God. All the things that, that are practiced in the world that, that doesn't know Jesus... It's a, it, it, it's, it's a person, it's a place that it's, an, it's, it's, an, 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 it's against God. It's an enemy of God. This is the world where all sinners are lost. So what is that what you came to do? To save us. That, that's the beauty of the gospel. That's the beauty of the Bible, young people. That he came to save us. The word save means to rescue a person that is a great danger, right? It, it, when you refer to the word save, that means that you've been liberated, you've been taken out, you've been rescued when you were in a place of great danger. Jesus came to save us from the wrath of God. Now let, let, let us think about that a little bit. We're sinners. God hates sin. We should poof, die. That's the wrath of God. The, 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 the God is mad against sin. He is, the, the, his wrath is against those that, that commit sin. And, and, and that's where we were. We were in a place of a great danger because we were under the wrath of God. Jesus came, and listen to this, Jesus came to save us from God. Think about that for a second. God's wrath, he's mad Jesus comes into the picture and he saved us from God because we were worthy of the wrath of God. Jesus came to save us from God himself. God is not only our greatest hope, God is also our greatest threat. I want you to think about that. God is not only our greatest hope, God also is our greatest threat. Romans uh, 1.18 to be a little more clear. 
The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all godliness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. That's who where we are. The wrath of God. He's, he's mad against sin. He's going to destroy sin. And if Jesus wouldn't have come, we would all be condemned. That's the wrath of God. So Jesus came to save us from God, to save us from the wrath of God. There is only one that can save you from the wrath of God, and it's God himself. It is God's mercy that saves us from the wrath of God. His mercy has triumphed over his judgments. Mercy and judgment. Mercy, judgment. God comes and he sees that he prefers mercy over condemnation. But there is, there is something that we have to do. There's something that you have to do, right? There's only one that can save us from the wrath from God and it's God himself. So whom did he come to save? He came to save sinners who were under the wrath of of God. He didn't come for good people, right? He didn't come for people that, 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 that behave. And I've told you guys many times, I still remember when I knocked on that lady's door and I said, hey, Jesus loves you. He, you know, he wants to save you from your sin. <laughs> oh boy, did she get mad at me. <laughs> you calling me a sinner? You calling me a bad person? I don't wish nobody harm. I get along with my neighbors. There's some neighbors that just don't get along. Right? I get along with my neighbors. I, I, I donate to the cancer society, you know. Sometimes on TV they put commercials of dogs and they're, and they're tied to chains in the snow and, and people say, you know, give money to them so they, we can help the dogs. ASPC, I think it's called, right? And people donate. They're, 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 they're good deeds. They're, they're, they're good things, right? But people don't think deeper inside that they're sinners. And, and if you don't understand that you are a sinner, then salvation is not for you. A good person, a, a person that is sick, where does he go? He goes to the hospital, right? If he thinks there's nothing wrong with me, why should I go to the hospital? I'm not sick, you know. But if I'm hurting, I'm going to go to the hospital and say, hey, doc, I'm hurting. Well, let's check it out. Let's take an x-ray. Let's take a look at it. God did not come for good people. He came for bad people. He came for them that were broken, that had broken his commandments. Uh, those that had rejected God. And this is something that's very important, young people, for us to understand. That we are all in the same boat here. We were sinners. We had rejected God. But thank God for his word. Thank God that he came. Look at uh, the, 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 the very known verse, John 3, 16, for God so love the world that he gave his only begotten son for whosoever shall believe it in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. This is the reason Jesus came from heaven. For this reason, he came into the world. For this reason, he came into humanity. For this reason, he came unto you, right? And as we work, hear the word of God, as we, we, we understand the word of God, we understand that his sacrifice upon the cross is, is, is what had to be done for us to be forgiven because our good deeds couldn't help us. We needed somebody else to help us, right? To be saved from God himself. And Jesus says, hey, I'll take Daniel's sin, put it on me, right? I'll take your sin, put it on me. We have to understand that, right? That he bores our sins. And, 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 and first Peter, uh, first Peter, listen, listen to what it says. It says, for God bore, he himself bore our sins. In other words, he took our sins upon his body, in his body on the cross, so that we might die to sin and live in righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. By his wounds, I put here, you shall be saved. By his sacrifice, you are saved. Healed from what? Uh, 
heal from the virus called sin. Sin is more deadly than the coronavirus, right? Many have survived coronavirus, but if people don't repent from their sins and come to Jesus Christ, there's no medicine. There's no nothing that they can pull off the shelves at the pharmacy, at CVS or whatever, that can cure that. Only Jesus can cure, cure the virus of sin, right? And, 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 and this is very important, young people, for us to know, you know. Uh, at times we hear people want to get baptized, and, and uh, it's pretty sad because as time goes, they kind of step back. It's happened to me. I've had people that get here since Brother James, I want to get baptized. Right? Let's get Bible studies. We start Bible studies, you know, and time passes by. They go to school. They're with their friends. They tend to forget what Brother James is preaching today. They let the other things overwhelm them than understanding what God is seeking from us, right? And, 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 and you know, I, I could get mad. You know, I'm not going to give them Bible studies no more. They're just playing with me, and they're telling me they're going to get, you know. And I say, well, why should I get mad? They're not offending me. They're not sinning against me. They're sinning against he who gave his life for them. And that, that's very serious stuff. So I don't know. If there's, is there a question? I hear the music already. I knew it was going to how to speed it up a little bit. Yeah, you know. Well, I kind of felt confused when you said that there was a branch of God in the womb of God who said to Jesus. Yeah, that's a... I used to think it was through God. Yeah. Well, there's God... The, 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 the God who created everything, right? That same God decided to come down in human flesh. It's, it's not that there's two gods, but the, what, what we refer to is what the work of Jesus did to save us from the wrath of God. L listen, sin will, get, uh, sin will be uh, dealt with in a very aggressive manner if we don't repent. We have to go to what Jesus did in the cross, right? He himself came down for God's love what he sent his only begotten son. You kind of tend to think it was there, there's two persons there. No, God himself came down in human form. Yeah? In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was God. What it's saying is God, which is the word in the beginning said, let there be light. That's the word. The word of God is who he is. That word was flesh, came flesh. And he paid the price for our sins. So here's Jesus saving us from the wrath of God, or God himself, right? Because sin's going to be dealt with. We like it or not, it's going to be dealt with. In this lifetime or in the, at, at the judgment day where he will have to deal with sin, right? So it's, 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 it's something that we, as, uh, as we understand what the Bible tells us, or what his Holy Spirit tells us, is that God himself took a human form to be able to die. Because you couldn't die for your brother or your, your father because you're a sinful person. Some pure sacrifice, and only Jesus was pure. So his sacrifice was acceptable for all of our sins. Does that make, does that make sense? Yeah. Maybe that's another study. Well, that's, that's a great question, though. You're, you're thinking the right way. Amen? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for today. Thank you for this word, Lord. Uh, Lord, I know that it's making an impact in our lives, Lord. <clears throat> and uh, bless the young people, Lord. I know some of them have given their lives to you already. But there's some, Lord, that are on the fence, Lord, thinking about it. Lord, and, and we know that we're living in the last days, Lord. But you bless them, Lord. Bless them with your word. Uh, that your Holy Spirit might come and make that impact in their lives for them to realize uh, that you're the way. You are the only way to heaven. You are the door into heaven, Lord. And if we don't go in through that door, we are lost forever, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Bless their lives. Bless their parents. Bless them in, uh, at their return to school, Lord, that your angel might accompany them wherever they might go. In Jesus' name we ask you, amen, amen.